Hey everybody, we are going to talk gas manometers today. I'm installing the boiler in my shop here in Minnesota. I'm just about to set the gas pressure and I'm gonna go over some details on tools and how to do that in this video. I get this question a lot in my social media. So I wanna take care of it once and for all. I hope this is helpful to you, so stay tuned. All right, so whether you're installing new or you're retrofitting, you do need to know the maximum and minimum uh, gas ratings for in the, any individual appliance. Now, this is the only gas appliance in this whole shop. It's a post-frame building in floor heat, and I am installing this brand new. But I would do this for every appliance, whether I'm changing out or I'm working in old buildings. It's also a procedure that you need to know for service. Now, Every appliance has a rating for it. It's gonna show you a lot of different information uh, that is mechanical, technical to the appliance itself. What I'm concerned about are the inlet minimum and maximum uh, water column gas ratings. So it's, rate, it's read in water column or measured in water column. Uh, in North America, we use BTUs for our, our gas values and we measure them in PSI and in smaller increments It's broken down into water column or inches water column. All right So that's rated on here and on this particular boiler. You're not gonna be able to read it, but I have a minimum Gas supply pressure of four inches water column when I'm on natural gas um, And which I am here and then I have a maximum gas supply inlet pressure of 14 inches of water column. So we're gonna use a manometer to, to measure that right now. All right, so these are manometers. This is a digital manometer. It actually has two ports on it. I can measure a couple different pressures at one time. It does a whole bunch of different things uh, beyond what I'm gonna go over today. This is an analog manometer. Now this is much less expensive. As you can see, it looks like a regular analog gauge. This one is made for uh, very low pressure increments to measure in inches of water column. Now, so, so is this, of course. But this is the manometer I use daily. Uh, more expensive, you don't have to buy a digital manometer to be working on gas uh, pressure or gas systems. You do, however, need a manometer and it could be an analog, okay? I keep an analog on the van kind of stowed away in a bag that I don't have to access all the time so that hopefully it doesn't get damaged and then I can use it in the event that maybe my digital manometer needs batteries that I don't have on the truck or it's too cold, it's not working right or just something, maybe I don't trust it that day, okay? Sometimes you can have trust issues. But anyway, this one has a nice little magnet on the back there. And we're just going to go over how this all works. All right. So I've got a gas regulator right here. Now I've got two PSI of gas coming into the building from the meter. And that's on the inlet side of this regulator. On the outlet side, this regulator is dropping that pressure down. And we're going to measure and verify by adjusting the outlet pressure of that regulator. It's really simple. There's just a spring and a rubber diaphragm with an adjustment screw. We're going to make, we're going to take the measurement at the gas valve on the boiler. Then we're going to adjust the valve as needed. I'm sure it needs adjusted. It all, they always do. They're never right on where you need them. So we're going to do that mostly with the digital manometer and I can just show you what it looks like with, a, with the uh, analog as well. All right. So I've taken the little cap off my regulator. There is typically a cap on here. This particular regulator has a hex slotted, you know, a hex screw, uh, adjustment screw inside of it. The, another regulator I use a lot in our industry is a different brand that usually is just a Phillips screw head. Uh, very simple, no special tools needed to make your adjustment at the regulator. Let's go over to the boiler now. So this is the, the burner is up, up here on the heat exchanger. This is the inducer or draft motor here for exhaust. What this is actually doing is drawing in air and gas through this motorized valve. Now here's the gas line coming in and they actually leave you a test port here. So if you're not familiar with this, that's what that little port is on the gas valve right there. It has a slotted screw in it. I'm gonna actually open the screw just a, like a quarter turn and I'm gonna place this hose from a manometer right on it. I wanna make sure my manometer is zeroed out. So I hold this bottom down button down here on there and it's gonna be, it's right now, there's a little pump inside of this. So it's actually pumping air because it's pulling in air from the room. And it's reading that there are zero inches of water column pressure 
at the inlet of this hose. Okay, as you can see right here. Hard to see with the camera, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna actually open this little screw, no big deal, just get my screwdriver lined up, give it about a quarter turn, just like that. Gas is coming out of this right now. I'm gonna hook up my hose. Let's see what the, the manometer says. We're at 8.2, 8.3 inches of water column, okay? That's actually fine. I could run the boiler on this right now, but I know from experience that these combi boilers need to be a, near or close to the upper end of their rating. So we're, what we're going to do right now is we're going to adjust the regulator. And so all I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that means. I'm literally just going to turn this uh, as I screw it into the regulator body. It's going to increase the outlet pressure. Okay. That's about it. You don't have to really see me do this because I want to be able to focus on the manometer right now. So I'm going to turn this and we're going to look at the manometer while we're still reading gas pressure. Okay. Get the light on. Yeah, we can see that. We're at 8.51 inches of water column, that top number there. And I'm just going to screw the adjustment screw in on the regulator. And I'm screwing it pretty slowly just so you can see the inlet pressure that we're reading with the manometer rise up. Okay, we're right at nine inches of water column right now. I'm gonna get it closer to 10. This boiler has a maximum inlet rating of 14. I could go all the way up to 14, it wouldn't be an issue. We're gonna just stop it at 10. And I know that this boiler operate really well with 10 inches of water column inlet pressure. Just get a little closer here. Yeah, 10.1, yeah, that's good. 10.07 on the digital scale. Now, because I already brought it up and I want to show you, um, this will do the exact same measurement, okay? It's just going to be le less, um, you're not going to get the decimal point readings on an analog gauge, right? So I'm just going to pop this hose off and I'm going to pop the, I'm going to uh, place the, the analog hose on. Same thing. And now we're, we're going to bleed this out a little bit here. Okay, we're at about nine inches of water column. So they don't read exact. I don't know which one is actually like perfect, but we're between nine and 10, depending on which manometer I put on here. And I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna pull this off real quick. Just go like that. Close up our adjustment screw. There we go. Okay, so that is your measurement process and your testing process. Now, we know that we're within the 4 and 14 inches inlet um, pressure and water column to the boiler. The boiler should operate properly. The reason you need to check this is because without the proper uh, inlet pressure to the boiler, without the proper gas pressure to the boiler, there's going to be combustion problems. It's, not gonna burn, it's either going to burn too rich or too lean. Um, this particular boiler does its own combustion testing and in that process during right after ignition It will probably fail its test its own self-diagnostic test if it's not at the proper re ratings Usually if it's too low um, And the other thing is this it is not a complete Installation unless you're verifying the proper gas delivery to the appliance hands down doesn't matter if it's a tank water heater, a tankless water heater, a gas furnace, a gas dryer, you name it. If you're not measuring and verifying the proper inlet pressure to the appliance, you have not completed the installation. So, as you can see, very simple. Digital manometer is the one I use every day. I, I like this one in particular, but you can buy it. There's a lot of them available. Look at the major brands. Uh, this is a field piece. There's uh, UEI, there's, there's a whole Testo, a whole bunch of, a whole slew of HVAC professional tools out there, uh, digital or analog manometers. Uh, like I said, absolute, you know, requirement to have on the installer's truck to verify 
proper installation. So if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any feedback for me, uh, please leave that. This video was meant for uh, the younger HVAC or plumber in installer out in the field. Uh, if you've never worked with these tools before and you're in the field, then you need to start. And hopefully this will just give you a little bit of background information on how it's done. Now, next step is going to be a different video. But once I get this system filled, purged, and ready to turn on, I'm going to use my manometer, actually, and just kind of re replicate or reproduce the same exact thing I did. I won't likely need to adjust my regulator, but I want to verify that my gas pressure at, through the ignition process doesn't drop below that uh, minimum inlet rating of four inches on this particular boiler. If it does, then I have to increase that pressure at the regulator. Pretty simple stuff, but that is just one extra step you need to take to verify everything is proper before you leave the appliance and go on to the next job. Have a good day.